we're really looking at these young male cohort that was predominantly out of China. Um, they had 30 volunteers. There was a middle-aged cohort, and I don't believe it defines the age, but as someone who's middle-aged, I would imagine they're probably at least in their 40s, and there were 37 healthy volunteers. And over the course of this, you know, this one-month period of Ramadan, um, the primary outcome uh, in the gut microbiome was... Um, ascertained by fecal DNA. So they were able to actually look at DNA uh, samples and be able to extract the, um, the, the phyla microbiota that was going on there. It was interesting that they mentioned the p-value was less than 0.05, which they found to be statistically significant. Um, they mentioned here that, but the, you know, the, the net impact was that when they looked at the DNA-based sequencing on the stool samples that they were seeing more butyric acid producing bacteria. Again, butyric acid provides energy to the uh, colon and is really significant. Again, we can go back and uh, talk about that. There, there's some, a lot of people who believe fervently this is related to fiber intake. Um, butyric acid uh, source foods can come from some protein-based foods as well. But it's interesting that they mention here, we did detect there was a positive correlation between body mass index and the abundance um, of bacteria specific to this particular type of bacteria that they found. And what I think is really relevant is that uh, although, again, the sample size was not you know, more than 100, and that was something that was always kind of um, hampered on me in graduate school, I think it really brings to light that there's more to fasting than just body composition changes you know, the gut microbiome is really so largely impacted by what goes on with our health, you know, the interrelationship between gut and brain, mood, neurotransmitters, etc. But, you know, the other piece of this that they talked about was that um, associated also with this increase of butyric acid was that you got um, improvement in not only blood glucose, but also body mass index and body composition, which for many people is the primary driver for why they are interested in intermittent fasting. But I just found this to be an interesting and relevant, um, you know, paper that I think for a lot of people that are focused on intermittent fasting, it, it provides another context of, of another population of people that can benefit from eating less often. That's really what it comes down to.